I'm Joe Kane. I'm Dan Kane. And I'm Sal Conca. And this is the Imperfect Podcast. Don't forget to check us out at hecklercane.com and everywhere on social media. To the bumper. So today, we have a very special guest with us, Marshall Teague. And if you're not familiar with who he is, you will be. He's been in movies like Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. He's been in The Rock. He's been in Babylon 5 and Armageddon, some of my favorite movies. And some of my favorite TV shows. He's been in Stargate SG-1. He's been in Sliders. He's been in um, all sorts of like sci-fi things that I love as, as little parts there. Yep. And so this has been a little bit, bit in the making. We've had some of our fans on Twitter that have wanted us to reach out to Marshall for a while. It goes back to one of our initial interviews with Ruth Hill, um, who has the blog My Devotional Thoughts. And so, you know, Marshall has just been in the industry for a long time, 30 plus years. He's appeared in over 130 film and TV shows. His balance of starring roles with powerful supporting characters, it's helped him build varied and pivotal body of work. His breakout role, though, was Jimmy Reno in the cult classic Roadhouse. So if you guys have not seen Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze and Marshall Teague throw down. Some of the best (laughs) fight scenes that are out there. Yeah. As far as 80s movies go and a fight scene, I mean, Dan, I know you haven't seen it prior to us talking about this. What did you think of that fight scene? It was pretty insane, <laughs> yeah. And I heard him talking on somewhere that they were they took like seventy two shots uh, to get that to, you know for five and a half hours they were fighting each other and actually kicking the crap out of each other. Yeah, so, broken bones and yeah. like the l- l- no holds barred. Exactly the way movies should be made. Yes, <laughs> no CGI, no special effects. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Um, I'm super psyched to have him on. So um, let's get talking to Marshall. You got it. So, Marshall, welcome to the Imperfect Podcast. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm going to start start this off by saying something. Uh, Sal, I think your dad was in the Navy. That's correct. Happy Veterans Day to your father. I'm in Navy. I'm retired Navy myself, and uh, I thank him for his service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and happy Veterans Day. Yes. Thank you very much. Exactly. Um, yeah, we're, we're so happy to have you here. It, it, we actually are recording on Veterans Day, even though this will be released on Monday. Um, and I know that was a big part of your life, and you've played a lot of those parts throughout your career. Have those parts been, uh, ex- you know, playing military parts, Have that has that been more special to you in a certain way, or have you been typecast? God forbid. No, no, no. <laughs> well, you know, typecast, that's, that's kind of a overused euphemism but uh you know i have basically been in a uniform over three quarters of my life so you know you know being in the military and they say oh by the way you're going to be playing a colonel you're going to be playing a sergeant you're going to be a general i played every rank in every service there is (laughs) i have i have stacks of uniforms that over the years i have collected because they say just take it home it fits you so i've you know, my wardrobe is, I said, honey, what am I going? Am I going in olive drab? Am I going in Marine Corps outfits? He said, why don't you just try clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, your career has extended 30 plus years. What is it like to have or what do you attribute to longevity in, in this type of career, being an actor, a working actor in Hollywood? Um, what do you attribute to the longevity? Because a lot of people don't get that. Well, uh, you're right. A lot of people don't. As a matter of fact, you can the list is long and distinguished or indistinguished, however you want to look at it, of people that have been overnight successes and then they go away. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy the craft of acting. My job is to act and to create a character and crawl into his skin and make it live. And... I don't, I do it because I love what I do. And that's, you know, there's a lot of people who get in for many different reasons and I've heard them all. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, I truly love what I do. If I can, if I can do a role and somebody comes up and say, says, for instance, several of these, you'll know them (laughs) in Roadhouse. I had many people, including my own mother, said, I hated your guts. I'm glad they (laughs) killed you. 
<laughs> wait, Thanks, wait, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. You think I'm joking. My, I told my mother not to go see the movie when it first came out, right? Mom, it's a little rough. Don't go see it. You know, just, you know, wait till later on. What does she do? She and her friends from her uh, church group get these vans. I think there was like six vans of ladies that went to the theater, which was 60 miles away, by the way. They went over across the street and got a happy meal, I guess, went to the theater and sat down and watched Roadhouse. Now, there's a certain part of Roadhouse where I say something a little bit off color. I know the line. <laughs> I know you too. And one of the ladies stood up in the middle of the theater, which was packed, by the way, and she said and pointed at my mother and said, that's Doris Teague's son. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well, my mother's my mother slid under the seat i bet and when i finally called her and i found out that she had gone to see this i said okay mom you know this first uh, really big picture i've been in uh so what'd you think when you hear the word well you know you're you're not batting a thousand with, with a little bit of a pause <laughs> There was a long, I mean, you could hear crickets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet. And, I, I, and she says, well, personally, I'm glad they killed you because you're a prick, and my son wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> so, obviously, Roadhouse was not your first gig. Um, no. You were in the Navy. You were a Navy man, as we mentioned. Yes. How did you come out of the Navy and get into acting? Did, any formal training? How, how did that go? How did you get into the biz? What, what was that big first step into it? Here, okay, this is going to throw you for a loop. I came in out of the Navy and became a cop. Okay. And because of a, skirt, a certain skill set that I had in the Navy, you know, I went, after I finished, uh, went through academy, I immediately went into SWAT. And from there... The sheriff decided to put me in a certain group chasing people that hurt children, which was just fine by me because I don't like that. And I came up with a bright idea. Okay, if I'm going to go undercover, how would I go undercover? Hmm. Not knowing anything about acting whatsoever, I said, hey, I'll take acting lessons. Really? Yeah. I studied acting to be a better cop. I had no intentions of being an actor whatsoever. So I studied. And this is going to draw it out a little bit. And I thought I was doing pretty good. And uh, the little theater group said, we're going to put on a play in the park. And the only role left is Midsummer Night's Dream was Puck. Okay. I don't know if you know, I don't know, if you know Midsummer Night's Dream. Puck was a wood nymph. Okay. I was 230 pounds. <laughs> I had an 18-inch neck, 48-inch chest, 17 and a half inch arms, and a 34-inch waist, wearing green tights and a wreath. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, no, here's the amazing part. While we're doing the play, and right before I'm coming on, there was a police car where my partner had, you know, had stepped in to take a guy's, you know, duty because his wife was having a baby. They're driving past the park, so I said, let's go check this out. They're standing out there way behind the lights. And here I come bouncing on the stage. <laughs> I look like the Incredible Hulk with a wreath on his head and leaves around my waist in green tights. And those old, you know, not what we have today, you know, you know, the special undergear, but the old long handle underwear tops that have been spray painted green. <laughs> and here I come. And in the background, I hear a guy, I said, you're right, he is crazy. And my partner remarked, hell, that ain't nothing, man. You ought to ride with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, needless to say, for about a month or so after that, every time I'd come in or get, to, get in my car or something else, there were leaves, butterfly wings, wreaths, green tights. So they took to you well and added a little sparkle into your life for the rest. <laughs> oh, they... It, to this day, I go back through there, and they, and it, to this day, the word's still there. Uh, so you played Puck. I, yeah, thanks. And, mm -hmm. and I'm really thankful they, did, they didn't have the cameras and phones they had today because 
that would be the shot that lives in infamy. Yeah. Mm. One day I just decided, you know, I don't know what it is about acting or this that is inside. But I said, I got to know. So, I wrote a letter to the to the late great uh, Hal Needham, who was stunt stunt uh, coordinator and director. Told him what I wanted to do. He wrote me a really nice letter back. He said, "You ever thought about acting?" Uh, not not really any formal training other than studying with the theater group. And I packed up my truck. I stuck Bob Seger in the uh, tape deck, put on a Hollywood Nights, and drove through the worst snowstorm that they had ever had. I came to Hollywood, slept in the janitor's closet of what is now the Beverly Garland Hotel, it used to be a Howard Johnson's, and I paid the uh, janitor off with uh, Jack Daniels and beer, set me up a cot in the mop closet. <laughs> wow. You, you, gotta, you have to love a story like that. I mean, you got to love a story like that. And That's you can't amazing. make a story like that. No, no. <laughs> Truth is stranger than fiction, right? We should look up yeah. this janitor and get him in on here. Yeah, we should have, we should have had the janitor on. <laughs> I hope he's not around because he'll tell stories of the guy waking wake me up with a, with a mop in the morning saying, you got to get up now. Go shave and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you mentioned Roadhouse. Um, one of my favorite childhood movies. Um, I was a child when Roadhouse came out, but I, I saw it. And uh, that, you're getting me where you go for it. <laughs> but no, it, there's wanna, snow on the mountain, but there's still a fire in the furnace. My I friend. know, but I'm getting, I'm getting old enough. I got some snow on the mountain too. I just a flurry, but I got some. <laughs> I got feel, you're making I, me feel better. I hey. wish I had anything on the mountain. Yeah. He's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He'd take the snow any day. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My wife will tell you right now, Sean Connery, who is, uh, you know, uh, doesn't have a lot of hair on top either. She thinks he's one of the sexiest men on earth. There you go, right? Didn't he win people's sexiest man of the year in like when he was several like times. 70 or something like that? I don't even know. <laughs> he actually won it several times. So yeah. she fell in love. And when he danced with her while we were doing uh, The Rock, he came over and asked me, Excuse me, Marshal. May I dance with this lovely lady? <laughs> That's a good impression. And I'm sitting here going, what am I going to say? I said, of course, by all means, please. And he came back and he handed me your hand and he said, she is absolutely ravishing. I don't know what you did right. <laughs> He's That's James it. Bond. You can't give your wife over to James Bond. <laughs> So oh, I, I, I just I just let her roll with it, man, and she was smiling from ear to ear. I mean, I have a question for you that that relates to that. I mean, meeting Sean Connery, being in a film with him as a working actor. I mean, do you get starstruck when you see Sean Connery, or is it is it you know just a professional thing where you you're just happy to be with him, or are you st still learning from him? I mean, you already been in the business for many years uh, yeah. when, when The Rock had taken place, right? So, and one of my I'll say it again, one of my favorite movies, The Rock. Love that movie to death. I love that movie. I've seen it a thousand times. <laughs> well, I can tell you, first of all, I know, uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't starstruck because I was also his safety diver. So anytime he was in the water, I was around him all the time. Wow. And I am the only person he signed an autograph for on the entire movie. Oh, that's cool. So, no, I wasn't starstruck, but I can tell you that I watched him like a hawk and I studied him every move he made the man when he walked on the set he's ready to go that's got to be and one of the best master classes you could ever imagine is being able to shadow someone like that oh i, I i've got to tell you i mean i was you want to talk about awestruck watching him work and seeing his process and how he broke down the characters how he became the character and how he inflected you know, for me, it was something that I just stared at time and time and time again. I watched every movie made, and it was, in fact, one of the one of the best learning experiences I've had. Many over the years, I've worked with seventeen Academy Award winning actors and actresses, and I've learned from every single one of them. Let's go back in time because I just can't. I, I the kid in me I gotta talk about Roadhouse and the fight scene I have to I it's just I gotta we gotta do it I know you've probably talked about it a thousand times and you've talked about it to death but I've seen him in <laughs> interviews talking about it I know besides yeah. I know. just here but <laughs> I know but now he's here and we get to talk to him about it I mean we've, you we, got me guys I'm all yours we, we've heard the rumors about the fight scene and how gritty and real that fight scene got 
So, you know, I mean, what was it like shooting that fight scene with Patrick Swayze, by the way, which must have been an amazing experience? I, were you close with Patrick um, well, uh, until the end? You know, that's, well, I can, I can tell you the, a little bit of the process. I had met uh, Buddy, you know, his, everybody calls him Patrick, his friends call him Buddy. I always called him Buddy. But uh, I'd met him years earlier back in, I think, 78, when he and his wife were riding a motorcycle doing, you know, finishing work and, you know, in houses and things like this before he got his start. But when I got, you know, when I said, you're going to be fighting Patrick Swayze, well, the first thing I thought was I'm going to be fighting a ballet dancer. <laughs> I didn't right. know that the stunt coordinator and the fight coordinator, the stunt coordinator is Charlie Bacherning, great guy. The fight coordinator is Benny the Jet Arquitas. I don't know if you've ever heard of Benny the Jet, but he retired 52-0, and 0, undefeated. Wow. World champion. Oh. They had been telling Buddy, he said, the guy you're going to fight was NATO heavyweight kickboxing champion, and he thinks you're a squirt <laughs> and a little wimp, and he thinks you're a dancer, and he's going to come in here and kick your, kick your ass. Well, I didn't say any of that. Never said that one time. I, they were saying that to him. Then the night of the fight, which took the big, the big fight, which took place in the second week of the movie, they came over to me, same two. They came over and they said, Marshall, he's a little bit intimidated. You're going to have to do something to try to get him into it. And I go, well, why would he be intimidated? Other, other than the fact that he and I had not spoken a single word to each other for two weeks. Not a good morning, not hello, how are you, nothing. We knew we were going to fight. So you and I didn't want to be I didn't want to be his friend. He didn't want to be mine. So, you know, camera rolls, he kicks me out. He kicks me and I stand there and I look at him and I brushed my shirt off. And I, I said, that, that it? Is that it? So he rolled camera again. He kicked me the second time I grabbed his foot and I threw him down. And I said, if that's the best kick you've got, this is going to be one lousy fight. He turned about as red as an exit sign. He stood up and he said, roll camera. He said it. And when he kicked me the next time, he skipped my butt on the ground about 10 to 12 feet like a rock going across the water. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to tell you, I was a little bit aired out. And I looked up at him and I said, now that's a kick. He came over and reached down, took my hand, lifted me up, and he says, you like this stuff, don't you? I said, no. I said, I love this stuff. And he said, what do you say? Let's don't cheat the audience for once. Let's bring it. Let's bring it all. And he said, we got to leave the faces alone because we've got to finish a movie. But what do you say? <laughs> let's, just, let's just bring it. And I said, you picked the right man for the job. So for five nights, five and a half hours a night, the actual fight is five and a half minutes long. We did that fight 71 times. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With the full, I, I full contact. And... Absolutely... <laughs> we were so beat up and bruised up. They were packing us in ice every night. They got to the point that they were having to put makeup on his ribs because, I mean, the bruising was so intense they were having to put makeup on his. I broke, I cracked two of his ribs with that log because it wasn't in the script. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. A little he bit of improv. He, cra he, he cracked my right eye socket. The blood you see in the movie is real. It is not fake. Wow. He cracked my he cracked my eye socket. And the last night he and I were leaning together like two totem poles. We were so tired. And he said, You got one more in you? I said, Let's go. And we finished it. What I ended up with was probably I would have to say one of the dearest friends I've ever had in my life. I love him dearly. I miss him every single day of my life. Hmm. The last message on this phone we're talking on is the one he sent me two weeks before he passed away, where he said, I'm going to beat this SOB. I love you, buddy. It's never been erased and never will be erased. Wow. That's so touching. if you want to talk about a friend, yeah, yeah. Wow. you can't get much closer than that.
That's awesome. And and that's one of the things about this business is, you know, a movie like that, you make relationships with folks along the way that last forever. And that's kind of a theme we've had with some of the other guests on our on our show. And, you know, folks have just talked about um, how important the relationships are in this business. And well, it is. you may not see the person for after you work with them for a couple of years. Mm hmm. But it's amazing when you run into him again, it's like you saw him last week and you just pick up where you left off. How long did filming last for Roadhouse? How long were you guys together uh, just in general? I think it was like eight, ten weeks. Cool. You know, yeah. we, you know, we, we, you know we, we addressed Roadhouse as we went to a fight and a movie broke out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, greatest Best way I could describe it. Well, I just found out there's a new movie theater that opened up in Brooklyn called uh, the Alamo Draft House, and Roadhouse is going to be playing there um, on the big screen. So I got I got to see if we can wrangle the boys and go see it on the on the big screen. I'm in. Hey, go, see, go, <laughs> I'm see, in. Look, go see it on the big screen because it's a lot different on the big screen than it is on the TV. And you for know, sure. I've been killed. I don't know. It's been showing now for we. I just did a piece which I think is the 25th anniversary. It came out in Blu-ray. It was a Blu-ray edition that just came out. And the interviews of the people that were left, of course, you know, some are no longer with us. Mr. Bengazara, who I really, truly enjoyed working with. Uh, and, uh, you know, so many people that are no longer with it, just no longer with us. It was a family. We came together uh, on that. And I got to tell you, you know, uh, they were going to try to shut us down the last night of the fight. The last night of the fight is that fight with everybody, pool stick, 42 people at one time. <laughs> they were going to shut us down the night before the Teamsters said, you can't move that equipment without the trucks, and we have the keys. So you're not moving that equipment. They're going to finish this movie. There you go. <laughs> so I've always had a very soft spot for them, and I appreciate it very much. Yeah. I, I have to... Um... I'm going to derail the, the Roadhouse thing because I feel like you've talked about this like a million times over the past umpteen years. Mm -hmm. um, I got to say, you've had quite the established television career on top yes. of the movie career. Um, I've been very blessed. Some of my favorites, some of my favorite shows you were in. <laughs> Hands down. Some of my favorite shows of all times. Quantum Leap, all right, Diver, the Knight Rider, yeah. A-Team, Stargate SG-1, The Fall Guy, and Tales from the Crypt. Oh, Tales from the Crypt, I didn't catch that. Yes! <laughs> Dude, I did two of those. Two of them! Oh, my God. I watched every one of those. Two I just, of the, it, the oh. Fall Guy, he was in three. Okay. I mean, you've, you've just unbelievable uh, resume of stuff. And, and I'm only touching upon, these are just my personal favorites mm -hmm. that yeah. you've been in. Uh, your, your television career, I mean, you want to discuss a little bit about it? or? I mean, I, I mean I've, you know, you've got young actors out there today, and, you know, and they hear about Westerns. I've done 17 Westerns, <laughs> both in television, you know, television, movies of the week, uh, you know, and you, you want to talk about a playground? You get to dress up, get on a horse, and you go out there all day long, covered in dirt, having the best time of your life. <laughs> you know, you eat with the Wranglers, you got horses around you all the time, and it's a really great experience. And when you speak to some young actors today, most of them say, yeah, I've seen a couple of Westerns, mm -hmm. but they don't yeah. understand what goes into them. And I, and I wish, you know, I wish Hollywood would make more of them because they're really a part of our history. What do you what do you think about the uh, the new vitalization of westerns? Uh, for example, like Qu Quentin Tarantino just uh, did a western. Uh, is is that something? Are they going in the right direction with it, or are they should I we get back I, to something I, more traditional? I think I think they've taken it in a. This is just me personally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quentin's a very talented man. I'll tell you that right on the front end. But some of the things that he's done, you know, you it's like taking. You know, it, it's like it's like putting a Star Wars touch on a Western genre mm -hmm. or a modern, you know, or, or something that's ju just doesn't fit, didn't happen in the time. Uh, the weapons they use are incorrect. Sure. You know, the, clo the clothes they wear are incorrect, but they don't care. You know, it's 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 just about, OK, let's throw in the by bylines. Let's do a little vulgarity here, which was used in the West. Let's, sure. you know, let's face it. They used it just like anybody else, but it gets to the 
it gets to the point uh, for me, you know, uh, I just, I just can't. It's, it's really kind of hard for me to watch. Yeah. Well, because they 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 try to you you watch a movie, you have to suspend reality to some degree, but sometimes the reality it escapes you. You can't follow the story anymore well, it, because it, it isn't much. reality. Sure, yeah. They don't. They're not even touching on reality. They're trying to put in make a slick show, and they do. You know, they do a slick uh, version of what they think the West is like. But bless his heart, Quentin. I don't even know if he's ever ridden a horse. <laughs> <laughs> We'll ask. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can find out for you. In terms of TV versus movies, how do you feel? Do you, is there one uh, format you prefer to work in or that you like watching yourself in? Or, Well, you know, I'll tell you around the front, I'm not really a big fan of watching myself. I've seen my work. It's like people say I got to go watch dailies. Yeah, I was I was going to say that's actually two separate like issues right there. I, well, it is two separate. It's <laughs> going, two, do you like separate. watching yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and I've never watched a day of dailies in my life. Yeah. And the reason for it is because once you have crawled, and I call it, you'll hear me use the expression, crawling into the skin of a character, because that's what I believe you have to do. Mm-hmm. You have to live, eat, and breathe this character to play it. But... Uh, once you crawl into the skin of it and you become this character, you live it. You know, whether it be television, whether it be movies, my job, I'm an actor. That is my job. And, you know, matter of fact, who was it? Um, I'll think of it in a minute. William Shatner said years ago, because he said, you do commercials, you do this, you do movies, you do television. What is it? And he said, my, I'm an actor. My job is to act whether it be television or whether it be movies, whether it be anything. My job is to act and to be as honest as I can when I'm doing it. And, you know, he's right. As far as as watching the dailies, I mean, that's really, that's putting the trust into the directors and the other people around you to make sure that you're doing what's right. Well, you, 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 you hope that the director is the third eye that's looking. And if you screw it badly enough, he's going to sit there and say, cut. Let's do it again, you know. But once you know, when he says, that's money, print it, that's the one, you've done all you can do. And then it's up to the director and the editors and everything else to put it together. And, you know, you have to trust him to do that. I've been told that, you know, scenes I've done, you know, and joking, I guess they were, I think they were joking, I don't know. I, I've done scenes, they said, they'll never make it into the cut. Well, you know, when the final thing comes out, that scene's right there. You know, why? Because it was just different enough that fit in to where he said, that's just quirky enough, I need that. Mm -hmm. And they put it in there. You know, and you look at it and you go, gosh, they told me to never make it. (laughs) You know, do I hang my head and go, oh, gosh, darn, I did my best. No, (laughs) you just just look at it and go, yes, it made it. You know, so cool. But there, there, there is no real... There is no real one thing that I can say. I love movies, don't get me wrong, because you're there for a longer period of time. You create, I don't want to necessarily say deeper, but you you create friend, uh, deeper friendships, mm-hmm. you know, depending on what you're doing. You create some wonderful friendships, and you end up getting to know of the people, their lives, how they came into the business. You know, what was their... You know, because, you know, other than people that were just born into the business, which I obviously was not, you know, there's some pretty interesting stories out there. And I love hearing them. I really do. I dig them, you know, because I dig the people. You know, I've I've rarely had, I've rarely worked with a prima donna or somebody that was just so full of themselves that they, you know, didn't have the time. I mean, has it happened? Yeah, one I can count the times on one hand. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't tolerate it much anyway. I don't. <laughs> you strike me as the the type that would not tolerate it. I, I almost so want to go well, there and I, ask I, you. I just say, why don't you go to I, – I've asked him. I say, why don't you go to your trailer, get him, take a nap, relax. I'll just work with the script lady here. I, I almost want to be that guy and ask you who it is that you would you would be uh, totally appalled by, but that's kind of <laughs> – no. I'm not, I'm not really appalled by any – I take them on – I take them for – the moment 
they can't they can't offend me. You know, I you know because if they step over that line, they'll know it. <laughs> sure. And they, and they won't they, they won't do it again. Fair enough. And, and the reason for that, I I give everybody the utmost respect that I, every actor I treat them with the utmost respect. Human. Everybody, uh, I they're 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 no different than me. I'm no better than anyone else. Uh, you, you know, my job is no more important. This is the way I look at it. What I do is no more important than what every working stiff out there does every day to put bread on the table, pay the bills, uh, to send, send the kids to school, whatever. My job doesn't make me any better. I'm just I'm just a person, just like they are. I'm no better. They're no better than I am. Well, we love your humbleness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, awesome. it's 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 great. It's refreshing. I mean, there's there's not a lot of people that uh, that that have that sort of humbleness and can be so down to earth. You know. Well, uh, you true. you know you treat people the way you want to be treated yourself. I mean, really. Of course. And I tr- and I try to do that. Well, I guess that's why you've had such a long career. People must re- really respect you in the industry. They wouldn't hire you hire you over and over again if they didn't. So your reputation obviously supersedes you. You know, supersedes well, yourself. I got to tell you, I get hired a lot. They said, Marshall, we love you to death. We're going to kill you, but we love you." A total of 106 times you've died. Yes, apparently 106 <laughs> times. I mean, that's 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 a, that's counting? a lot of love. That's a lot of love, guys. I got to tell you, that's a lot of love. <laughs> I mean, there was one time that I was going to get. I think it was the last episode of Walker, a regular season Walker, and the guys, the the guys that were doing the uh, putting the squibs on, it had made a special T-shirt, and I think that was my one hundred my one hundredth death. They made a, a special T-shirt just for me. That's awesome. And then blew it to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And it was it, it was just terrific. You know, 100 deaths, put it under, put the squibs on it, just blew it, just blew it to smithereens. Well, you and Chuck Norris are pretty close, I assume, as well, yeah? Uh, you know, he and I once tried to figure out how many years we actually have known each other. It hap- it's decades. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's kind of like my brother, you know, I've just known him so long. I mean, I've been choked out by him, kicked, hit, the whole nine yards, and... He, he's a gentleman. He, he knocked me out one time. And do it. Now, now listen to it. I mean, we, we were doing, we were doing. Hey, now hear me out. We were mm-hmm. doing an ex, ex, exhibition sparring match, and he got a good clock in there, and he clocked me, and I was out. I didn't drop. I was still standing, but I was out cold. <laughs> why my why my legs didn't go? I don't know. But he said you still had your hands up. He said, but you were out. He came over, he started slapping me on the side of the face. He said, Marshall, are you okay? I said, as soon as the, the room stops spinning and I can see one of you, not two of you, he said, I'll be ready to go again. He said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you see with him is what you get. He's just that kind of guy. He's just, uh, he's great to kids. He has a great kids organization. You may have heard it. It's called Kickstart mm-hmm. for kids. And uh, 85,000 kids have gone through that uh, program over the last 20 some odd years, 25 years, I believe. And all of them have graduated from high school. Many have gone on to college. Many have gone on to run corporations. That's not awesome. many, not many things can say that. No. Yep. And that's really a tribute to him and what he's, what he believes in and, he, and that, the kind of person that he is. We've talked a lot about your past and your career. Um, let's talk about the present. Um, okay. I think I had come across uh, the road to the well trailer oh yeah which you're oh, yeah. in currently I, I, is that in festival now as well it it is as a matter of fact it's coming to fort worth i just flew in it's called the lone star film festival it's a uh you know i i had just come back from doing a project and my wife had received this you know the, the pages on this and came through and she said you will read this <laughs> is she your manager does she no, she's she's my wife. So okay. what did I say? Yes, dear. Yeah. <laughs> happy if wife, smart, happy life. <laughs> if you're smart, you say yes, dear. Mm-hmm. So I read it, and the character that I read for, I just 
fell in love with him. You know, I just, he, he was, it's such a dark story. And the character I play really is the key to the road to the well. Maybe you can explain to our audience a little bit about the story and what it's about. It is a, it's a very dark murder mystery. Uh, two young men, uh, one is an innocent and gets drugged into this dark murder uh, by someone that he thinks is his friend. And they go on this trek, you know, to get rid of the body. And the whole time, the young kid is getting this guilt trip laid on him. He thinks he's as guilty as sin, which in fact he's not. Then they run across, they come to this mountain town, and there's only one guy that lives there year round. Guess who? <laughs> Me. And I, and I play a retired army chaplain. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Another uniform. But what we come to, what it's about is that dark turn in the road. Because everybody has their demons that they exercise in one form or another. They have to. Sooner or later you exercise your demons. Mine, uh, my, my demon, and this is, I can't fulfill what I really want because I've lost my wife who was my best friend. And the reason we built that cabin in the mountains is so we'd have a place to retire and live out our lives. Well, obviously she left early, which broke my heart. I have since lost my will to live, but because of my faith, obviously I cannot take the easy road out. So the road, the road to the well, is a chess game for me to get what I want, for them to get what they want, they think. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the interesting thing about it, we shot the scene the first time. I just met these two guys, and the director, writer, John Savak, wonderful, wonderful man, and had written this very dark piece, and I, I just loved it. And when I walked in to read for it originally, uh, Billy DeMota, who was the casting director, he said, what part of the scene would you like to read? And I said, I want to read it all. <laughs> and I said, I looked at the director, John, and I said, take off your hat. He said, excuse me? I said, take off your hat. Why do you want me to take off my hat? I said, because I'm talking to your eyes. I'm not going to talk to your hat. So take it off. He took it off. I put the pages down and I said, let's go. We did eighteen. It. We did eighteen pages front to back without stop. Damn! Wow, that's how I you stood up. That's how you get I, a job, kids. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's yeah, listening, I, that's how I, you get a I, job. I, literally, I stood up. I thanked him. I walked out the door. I learned later that John, because there were still nine people out there, they had to read the same character. John looked over at Billy, and I didn't know this till way after we were in shooting. He came up to me and said, you know, after you left the room, I looked over at Billy DeMoto and I said, do we have to read anybody else? Wow. That's awesome. He oh. said, the guy just, well, this, this guy is the character. <laughs> so That's... I got it, played it, and I enjoyed every minute of it. I got to tell you guys, I don't know if any of you are vegans. Any of you guys vegans? No. No, hell no. <laughs> no, neither am I. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> no, hell no. I'm a stone carnivore. Yeah. Well, I worked with a cast and crew of 37 vegans. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to go through oh. that. <laughs> Actually, it was a blast. I learned 30 things about turnips I didn't know. <laughs> and kale and I'm, all I'm not quite stuff. sure I'd want to know more things about turnips than I know already. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know you could fix them that many ways because, believe me, we ate them a lot. Yeah. That's great. But, you know... They were, they were great. They knew I wasn't one. I mean, they, they all knew that. And they knew the cook was slipping me a turkey sandwich on the side. So <laughs> I was happy. They are happy. You know, it was great. They all, they all got they, together before the shoot and said, oh, let's play a little prank on Marshall. We're all vegans. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and if they did, they pulled it off. <laughs> they pulled it off. But there was the greatest bunch of, uh, of dedicated workers. And we were working nights at 17 degrees. Oh wow! Yeah. We were, up where lake, was we were Lake Lake Tahoe, seventeen degrees. Oof. We're shooting this movie, and uh, 
they were just they worked their butts off, and I really really admire them. I mean, you know, and the movies the movie has gone around to uh, you know several film festivals, won best of show, uh, best cinematography. You know, you know this you know story. It's 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 won some awards. It's really a, a good piece, and I'm very proud of it. What else is in store for the future? Well, we've got a you know a couple of things in the works. Uh, I'm going to be going back to Los Angeles for the it's called the Raw Television Science uh, Convention. You know that I'm going to be speaking at, and uh, we're going to be uh, opening up a new program that I involve I'm involved in. I can't really tell you a lot about it yet. Oh, this is the super uh, super secret special project that we can talk about, but well, not talk about <laughs> the soft launch. The, it is the soft launch for the project is taking place there, and there is a lot of people that work, you know, with NASA, which we do. You know, we work uh, with NASA uh, and other educational groups because it will just it's just uh, just think about this a combination of uh, science, education, and sports played in zero gravity. I'm Why not? Okay. That's about as much as I can tell you without getting in trouble. I, I really appreciate you having me on and, and, and you know being the gracious host that you are. And again, I thank your dad for his service. It's, it's very special to me knowing that your dad served this country as to all men and women. I say I, my, I go out to all of them. For sure. Thank you so much, yes. Marshall. Thank you. And and I know the ladies, we got to give the ladies on Twitter a shout out. Lisa and Mary and, and all of our friends out on oh. Twitter, they're they're dying to see this episode. So they're they're gonna love this. I know they would have wanted us to go for like three well, hours. Please, when you when you talk to them, please give them give them my very best, would you please? I know you have some really sweet support on Twitter. Um you can follow um Marshall Teague at Marshall Teague on Twitter. Um and uh yeah. And and Facebook, it's Marshall R Teague. Marshall R Teague on Facebook and Twitter. The, the middle initial R. There you it's go. It's Marshall R Teague. But you can follow me. Please do. I appreciate it. Anything you know? Anytime people want to chat, I chat back. Yeah, you're awesome. Yeah. Thanks Thank so you. much, Marshall. You're more than welcome. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks. Talk to you.